before Susie, we had another singer. Uh, so this was uh, spring of 94, mm -hmm. and uh, her name was Kobe. She was in the band for about a year and a half. And she was a young, extremely intelligent, imaginative teenager, and she just magically came up with the word and spelling one day and said, this is going to be the name of the band. <laughs> for about a year and a half, we toured the U.S. twice and put out several singles, like seven inch records, um, never any albums. Um, she left the band and Susie joined. And Susie was with us for about a year. And in that year, we put out a couple singles, uh, did a five week US tour and put out um, our, our only album at the time. The band broke up in spring of 1997-ish. Yeah, it was the spring. Um, and I should also back up a little bit and say, their first singer quit in December of 95, and I was asked to join the band in the mm -hmm. spring of 96. So we were about to play a show, and this was the day before. We were about to fly to sign a record deal, by the way. <laughs> and um, somebody had a little bit of an um, emotional breakdown and just quit on the spot. That was me. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Girlfriend troubles. Yeah, <laughs> love troubles. Yeah. Um, we weren't dating then. Um, we no. didn't date for a long time after that. But uh, yeah, he basically just quit out of nowhere. I let my emotions get the best of me. Yeah. The band broke up in like 1997. And March of 97. Yeah, so actually, you know, we also run an independent record label, which has put out our records in the past. And so over the years, we'd occasionally get the band back together to play. We had the 20th anniversary of the record label um, in 2014, mm -hmm. and we had a great time. And so that's when we started talking about, like, why do we, why do we, why do, yeah, why do why do we stop doing Yeah, it? why don't we keep doing this? So probably about a year later, late 2015, we formally got back together, or officially got back together, I should say. We were having so much fun writing new songs, and we had probably about nine total that we'd finished. In May of last year, I suggested to everyone else, and we're having so much fun, let's go make a record, but let's go travel, travel and just spend the time recording because none of us have ever done that. We've only ever been able to do nights and weekends, and we just didn't ever have the desire to make the time or, or have the money for it, you know. And um, it was a little more complicated because we're all grown-ups and people have kids and jobs, and but we were able to block the time off, and we drove to Baltimore in August of last year, and we got to work with someone that we really respect and admire, and we banged a record out, and, five days and it was one of the best experiences of my life. So I'm really glad that, that we decided to do it because it was great. I wrote the song Business Mode on a Saturday afternoon. I just had the idea for the guitar riff and then I realized that where I wanted to go with it, where it was super poppy but also I wanted to write about something that was really kind of dark and sad. So I decided to write a song about what it's like to be in a relationship for someone with someone for a really long time and also have to be their care partner because um, I've had MS for almost as long as we've been married, mm -hmm. 17 years. So he's had to take on that role and it's really hard sometimes to watch someone that you love. It's, it's a double-edged sword because it's hard for him to watch me go through it but then I also don't want to feel like a burden to him. Um, and the chorus is basically me talking about how he came running down the hallway with this look on his face of just sheer terror because I had fallen and he didn't know what had happened. And it was just, it's, the, it's basically me saying, I don't want to see you have that look of terror on your face anymore. It's something that you never really expect to have to deal with. The song obviously has very, um personal and almost dark uh, lyrical content. You know, it's about two people struggling in an in in unfortunate situation in a relationship. So we basically just took the, took, because of business mode, the title, 
we, we wanted to make a video that just contrasted that, mm -hmm. so, you know, so make a fun video with a serious song. And so we just basically took the term business mode literally and yeah. said, let's just set it in an office. Let's create a, a drab office environment where we're this kind of upper management creeping around silently looking at everybody. I didn't even um, get that far with it. Yeah. So it was just a, it was just a, a, a literal play on the title, basically. While we were shooting, you know, uh, Mike, the director, and, and I had discussed, de you know, details and shot lists, but there really wasn't like a storyboard or anything to follow. So a lot of it was just these kind of ideas like, let's do this, let's capture this, let's capture this, while still making sure we got those, sh those minimal shot lists that we had discussed. So it was kind of just fun, just a lot of people just hanging out and, you know, um, just flying by the seat of our pants. The ending, the end of the song has this very slow, drawn out breakdown. So we, we created this slow motion shot of Susie just singing to the camera um, while we had um, people hidden in cubicles, basically doing an explosion of paper. We bought a big box of like 5,000 sheets of paper and we just had people just, just pumping them out uh, to create kind of a confetti effect in slow motion, almost like an explosion. Uh, because the, song, the end of the song is kind of heavy, so we wanted something kind of uh, uh, dramatic while also maybe beautiful. Is that right? Is that I good? I think so. Yeah. Um, we think it looks beautiful. So it was a good contrast to the first half of the song.